Um, one, one question, I, because we're talking about music, um, is I'm curious if you could do, like, if someone were to ask about Carnatic music and South Indian music, could you just give a very, this might be a hard way to do this, but can you give a, a general basic description of of what it is and maybe how it differs from Western music? I can try. Um, so Carnatic music is uh, is another name for the classical music that is derived from South India. Um, the name itself may be vaguely der- derived from the name of a state called Karnataka. Um, so I'm from Bangalore and that's the capital city of that state, Karnataka. But uh, there's several states in the Southern part of India that are known to be excellent uh, uh, purveyors of Carnatic music. Um, it, it is the, the the art form that kind of um, gave way to uh, a whole bunch of other art forms, including dance, which uh, so- South Indian classical dance um, goes very well hand in hand with Carnatic music. So you, ha- you can have live musicians performing these intricate compositions and dancers learn those steps that they have to perform in order to go along with that music. So. Um, it it's very um, melody based. Um, you rarely find the traditional Carnatic music to be uh, uh, as a, a foreground behind, as a foreground in front of a background music of, of chords or progressions or um, lots of instruments trying to fill a, a wall of music in the back. It's it's there. It's in your face and and. Um, one of the things that you probably noticed if you went to a performance is um, you will have a vocalist who is the the lead performer for the concert, um, an accompanist who is typically um, playing a violin, and a percussionist who is typically playing a, a South Indian instrument, a drum instrument called a murdangam. So that forms your very, very basic trio of uh, musicians that you would need for a very involved Carnatic music concert. Um, so, so you wouldn't see anything like a, a bass guitar or, or a rhythm section or, or just strings in the bag providing an orchestra, anything like that. This is melodic. It's, it's meant to be followed for, for the tune rather than for, um, for the background music. Cool. I, that was a great explanation of it. I, I thought, yeah. <laughs> You hit all the points, like especially like the dance correlation in North India, the Hindustani. There's a definitely strong correlation between dance and music, obviously, because it's a it makes you want to move. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the one thing I really liked about it was how melody based it was. Because being in Western music, the guitar you learn chords are one of the first things you learn, and not only this the melody base of it, but the movement of the melody is so beautiful with the mm-hmm. slide technique, what I call in guitar. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, um, you mentioned that this is just, you know, percussion, there's no cording or anything, no bass guitar, or anything is the rhythm. The rhythm is one thing that fascinates me. And the, just the, uh, the mathematical puzzles and gymnastics that, that mm-hmm. you can do. So I can see if you're learning those rhythms as a child, especially if you are going later to study mathematics, I mean, your brain is, you're, you're kind of tuning your brain to understand those concepts. But one term that I think of, obviously T high, I've talked about that in other other uh, mm-hmm. with other interviews. Um, but I want me to about the corvi. Mm-hmm. Is that a Carnatic? Yeah. That term is based in Carnatic music. Can you explain yeah, that yeah. corvi a little bit? Corvi is, uh, you know, I, I consider myself an amateur in terms of being able to explain this because this falls in strictly the percussion world of Carnatic music. So uh, if, if you've heard of the word tihai, which I think derives more from Hindustani music and, and from playing a tabla, uh, which is a North Indian instrument, um, a korvai is something that you might learn how to play as part of uh, a South Indian percussion composition. Um, so it, it, let's say you, um, you can keep up a, a beat um, in a cycle of eight. Um, you you can split those up into one two three four five six seven eight. A, a corvai is something that is a, a very intricate composition that 
you can repeat three times um, over multiple cycles of those eight. And it doesn't necessarily mean that that uh, that composition ends within the first or last beat of that eight beat cycle. Um, it could be in uh, the span of 17 cycles of eight. And you have to repeat that three times before you get back to the beginning. But it's, it's something that percussionists from South India are able to memorize and execute flawlessly. And if you're following along in a concert, it's, it's the, the most amazing thing because uh, you, you keep the, the, the cycle in your hands with, with something called a thalam. The tala. So you, if you're keeping um, track of the eight beat cycle, you do this with your hands. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that goes on and on. And so you provide that, um, that, that rhythm of the constant eight beat cycle and the percussionist plays over that and does all sorts of mental gymnastics that you probably will get tripped up on. <laughs> and somehow they always end up back on the one right at the end. And it, it's the most amazing feeling in the world. It, world it's like a, like a sus suspended cord that, that you've held on for 15 minutes and then it just yeah. finally hits right at the end and it finally gets resolved. Yeah, they they are they are fun to play. And I, the, I, we've done a couple like simpler versions, right? Performing mm -hmm. with some Kali. And I remember when I first heard them, like anybody who who, who first hears, hears them, like especially from a Western music background, just go, "What in the world is happening there?" It sounds so cool, but you're like, "How can they? How can they possibly keep track of that?" Mm -hmm. And then learning the first simple one that we did, I think Melkoons, right? No, no, was it Melkoons? Uh, that's. I guess that was a complex one. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of a different tune. Um, Takadi. Um. Not Takati, it was, uh, yeah, it was Melkoons. Yeah. Yeah, because we did we did the uh, redo of the original arrangement with, with oh, uh, yeah. I think, we Prasant. We extended it, yeah. we repeated it three times, yeah. And that, once I once I learned, like, it seemed totally confusing to me at first, like, how it was structured. But once I learned, like, each little part and how they fit together, and it made total sense. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it's like it, it was something that was pretty amazing to actually have the structure kind of come out I'll be able to see it and understand it and play it. And that's mm -hmm. when I know I keep playing that because I just love, love play, practicing that one. And I put yeah. different melodies to it and stuff, you know, this is a rhythm, rhythmic idea that that's cool about it. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, that, you, that yeah, that was, that was cool. Um, and uh, you probably have some in Talana, right? Is there some mm -hmm. stuff in there going on? There's, that's, that's one I never, I haven't gotten to, to, to uh, learn that one yet, but yeah. I've started it here and there, but that's, that's got quite a bit in it. <laughs> Um, I know you don't only listen to Indian music. I know you still enjoy it. I know you, uh, you're a rap fan, right? <laughs> yeah. So sometimes, uh, I, I do listen to some rap music. I, I can't say that I, I, I'd be able to name any recent artists that I'm a yeah. huge fan of like uh, quite that, that are popular right now, but yeah. Um, um, so what, uh, what I would ask is if, if I had asked you of any genre, anywhere in the world, any type of music, any time your life growing up, do you have like a one or two favorite musicians that you idolize as far as their their playing? Hmm. It could be a rapper, you know. It could be yeah. or or a or a, a mandolin player from from in South India. Yeah. <laughs> um, the the mandolin player that you're talking about, you Srinivas, um, one of the greatest, um, one of the greatest of all time. Um, revolutionized the instrument, changed what the mandolin is, took it from a, a double stringed instrument and uh, I think it changed it to a five string instrument that he can just play melodically over all five strings, which is insane. And he learned how to play Indian Carnatic music on this instrument and just blew up. I mean, he, he is, uh, he was, I should say, something beyond anything that most musicians can probably try to accomplish the level of in India. Um, definitely worth checking out some of his uh, videos there. They're on YouTube. Even as a young child, he was known as a prodigy. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of uh, violin, uh, one, one of my 
influences has definitely been a duo named Ganesh and Kumaresh. Um, they're brothers. They're, they're, they play violin together in, in many concerts. They dabble in the world of um, fusion music that, that we sometimes like to call ourselves uh, <laughs> um, a, uh, a band that does play fusion music. Uh, they they've uh, opened my mind about a lot of different things that you can do even in Carnatic music that may seem not so traditional, but it's it's still using the same instruments that you would normally learn everything from the basics onward. But you, they, there's so much more that you can do with it. Um, and out of out of left field here, something that I just uh, recently started learning more about. Um, Freddie Mercury. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how or why that just happened, but uh, I, I think I probably went on a, a Rami Malek kick of binging different things that he was he's performed in, and I saw um, uh, quite a bit from the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. I, I watched that uh, Live Eight concert from Queen from back in was it the eighties? Um, um, the eighties. Yep. Back, I, yeah. I was a kid when I was a little kid. <laughs> When you're like at the age you were doing two violin lessons a week, I was probably playing video games and watching live. That was what was it, Live Aid? Yeah, yeah, on TV. I remember. I remember that. I wasn't born then. <laughs> no, you weren't born yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was. Uh, I was blown away by his uh, stage presence and the amount of energy that that he had and and the way that he commanded that crowd. Holy crap! That that is a lot of people. You don't you don't really see that for. Uh, Indian music concerts, except for maybe if you count like Ravi Shankar being at Woodstock or something. That, yeah. <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> yep.